Hi everybody, I am Sarah with the trains and today you find me at Sleaford Station ready to head off on another railway adventure. Although I'm not actually starting this off by getting on a train. I'm visiting a very little served station so today my journey starts with a walk. Right then, now we've seen that turbo star go through, let's head off on our long walk to the little use station of Rossby. One thing I will just say, unlike other little rural stations I've walked to before, where I've just ended up walking on verges and on the road, it is on the map, pavement all the way. Nearly there, there's a little station sign. There we are. The end is in sight. Rawsby Station. We have made it. Rawsby Station. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a pheasant on the platform. Obviously this is zoomed in as anything, so it's a little shaky. <sighs> Flown off. That one snuck up on me. Now let's have a run round and run down of the station facilities here at Rossby. We have got two platforms. We've got these lovely old station signs on each platform. Each platform has the old bus shelter style waiting shelter and a wooden bench too. Over on the Skegness bound platform we have got cycle parking a flappy plastic bin, plenty of information signs and a ticket machine. We've also got the old station house which is no longer in railway use. On the other side of the road we have got the signal box, we have also got manually operated crossing gates and a grip bin. Over on the Skegness bound platform we have a Harrington hump. We don't have a Harrington hump on the Grantham platform. I feel left out. I might write a letter to points of view. Rawsby station was opened by the Boston, Sleaford and Midland Counties Railway to serve the small village of Rawsby. In 1902, the station began to serve what was then known as the Castephen County Asylum, later to be known as Rawsby Hospital. There were a couple of name changes between Castephen County Asylum and Rawsby Hospital, it was changed to Castephen Mental Hospital in 1922 and then to Rawsby Mental Hospital in 1933. To give a little bit of background, the asylum system in this country was nothing like we know mental health care to be today. People who these days would not necessarily need inpatient care and even people who didn't have mental health problems, the terms like feeble-minded and mentally unsound were so broad that people with learning difficulties and even people like myself who have epilepsy may find themselves in an asylum sometimes for life. It's not unfair to say that asylums could be used as a convenient place to put people 
what society deemed to be inconvenient. Asylums were self-contained and so it really was out of sight, out of mind. Asylums usually had a farm, a bakehouse, laundry, a water tower, even their own chapels. They re were really a world in their own right. Sadly, this does also mean that cemeteries were part of an asylum's makeup and even in death, people who lived in asylums could be separated from the rest of society. From 1806, the number of people classified as insane increased wildly. In 1806, the average amount of people in an asylum was 115, but by 1900, it was 1,000. In 1866, Dr Sir George Paget referred to the asylum system as, and I quote, the most blessed manifestation of true civilization the world can present. Really? On the other hand, in the 20th century, one historian referred to the asylum system as museums for the collection of the unwanted. Having studied the asylum system when I was at university doing history, I know which quote I agree with. In terms of Rawlsby, the first group of patients were transferred by rail from Grantham Workhouse in 1902. During the First World War, a lot of asylums got repurposed as military hospitals. Rawlsby wasn't one of these and actually had to accept patients from other areas into the hospital, which caused it to be overcrowded. There were actually reports of there being beds in the corridors because there were just so many people crammed into such a small space. During the Second World War, it was used as a crash and burns hospital by the RAF until 1947, and patients then returned to the hospital in 1949. In 1919, an isolation unit was built at the hospital in anticipation of dealing with patients suffering from the Spanish flu that was going on at the time. However, because the asylum itself was self-contained, it was never needed for that purpose and ultimately went on to be used to house the residents who worked on the farm. As time went on and care for mental health progressed, such as the use of sedatives instead of physical restraints and care in the community, which came in in the 1980s, the hospital declined, it was less and less needed and closed in 1997. The only part of it that remains open is the old isolation block, which is now used as a small inpatient unit for young people requiring inpatient care. I'm now going to hand over to Narration Sarah to tell you a bit more about the history of Rawlsby Hospital. After the hospital's closure in 1997, David Wilson Holmes began to redevelop the site in 2004, and that new housing estate is what we're walking through at the moment. It's called Greyleys after the railway crossing. In spite of this redevelopment, some of the buildings do still remain, although they are now derelict. The hospital was designed by architect George T. Hine, who designed both ornate and austere asylums. Rawlsby was the latter due to specific requests from Kastevan authorities. Hine cut down on decorative aspects due to their request to cut costs. Externally, it was plain, but inside, Hine provided more decoration with polychrome glazed brickwork, elaborate tiling, and Italian mosaic flooring. Fireproof ceilings and floors were provided by Stewart's Granolithic Company and plumbing by Dalton Co. Surprisingly, the asylum was actually a source of local pride, with the Sleaford Gazette reporting in 1901 that it was a magnificent institution and a palatial asylum. It was self-contained and self-sufficient with its own bakery, cobbler, dentist, laundry, farm and even blacksmith on site, among many other things. The grounds and gardens were designed by William Goldring, the designer of Kew Gardens in London. In spite of all this beauty, the asylum was not a fun place for staff or residents. From 1902 to the 1930s, staff worked 14-hour shifts with reduced staff covering the nighttime hours. They had half a day off per week and every third Sunday, and even then they had to be back at the asylum by 10pm. Both patients and staff were locked in the wards overnight. If female staff wanted to get married, they had to leave their job, and male staff could stay only if they got formal permission from the superintendent to get married. 
one member of staff was actually sacked for not getting permission. The patients here were largely from rural populations, and Dr Ewan, a physician at the asylum, had an appreciation for eugenics, and he felt that his patients justified this. In 1904, he wrote that madness was largely due to heredity, and more prominent in rural areas, due to intermarriage of the quote-unquote tainted, with emigration to towns and colonies removing the stronger people, thus increasing the numbers of the insane in rural areas. It's quite disgusting to think that a medical doctor actually held those opinions. In the 1950s, outpatient clinics were established at the hospital in order to avoid inpatient care, and in 1953, the admissions hospital was refurbished so it could be run separate to the main hospital, with patients being admitted voluntarily. In the 1960s, as with many former asylums, the farm was closed by central government. In 1976, the water tower, admissions block and the chapel all suffered subsidence, and from then on the chapel was only used for storage. The rear airing courts and landscape gardens were made grade 2 listed due to the William Goldring connection. I must say, I didn't expect there to be that much of the old buildings left. I knew that the old airing courts and some of the landscaping had been classed as Grade 2 listed, um, so I expected a little bit. Did not expect it to be that much. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's all fenced off now, I don't, and it looks like they're gearing up to demolish it because things have been boarded up and bricked up. So couldn't get any closer than just the fence. We did get chatting to some kids who were like, are you going to go in? No. <laughs> no, because that's like, that's a recipe for disaster because you'll either get done for trespass, potentially, or you'll end up getting hurt on some masonry or something. I know what my luck is like. <laughs> some kids asked me why I had a camera and I was like, oh, well, just taking pictures, making videos. And uh, said, oh, you're an explorer. I was like, no, I make videos about trains. <laughs> as much as I admire the architecture of those buildings and I do find a strange beauty in dilapidation, it must be remembered that the asylum system was often cruel to some of the most vulnerable people in society. It's important not to forget that. Anyway, it's now time to head back to Rawlsby Station to get one of the few trains that actually stop here. One thing we don't have here at Rawlsby, unfortunately, is departure screens. So, don't know when the trains are coming and going. I'm going to have to check my phone again. What is this, the Middle Ages? Oh, the gates are open. Train is imminent. I'm now back at Grantham, just in time to get that Azuma on camera. Excellent, I love getting the Azumas. It's just time for me to say 
thank you everybody so much for watching i will see you all next time for another railway adventure thanks for everybody who likes comment subscribe special thanks to everybody who donates to me on ko-fi my youtube members and patrons whose names will be up on the screen in a moment i'll see you next time bye as always, an extra special thank you to all my patrons and channel members and to everybody who donates to me on Ko-fi. You all really do keep this channel going. If you'd like to become a patron, a channel member or just buy me a coffee on Ko-fi, the links to do so are in the description below.